Hello everyone and welcome back. Here's something hot. The makeshift SMT reflow hot plate made completely from scratch. This project centerpiece is a heating element that was salvaged from a cloth iron. It is powered by AC power and regulated by a circuit comprises of a Shao microcontroller and a Max 6675 temperature sensor. The goal was to create a low cost functional hot plate for reflowing SMD circuit. This is actually version 2 of my previously made hot plate project which I created nearly 4 years ago. I published its video in 2021 and it's one of the most watched video on my channel. The previous version was operated by a mechanical mechanism called a thermostat, which was used to control the heating element. The thermostat is an important component of an electric iron that regulates its temperature. When the iron reaches a certain temperature, the thermostat turns off the power of the iron. This configuration works like this. Between the heating element and the AC supply, a relay in the circuit operates as a switch. The Shao microcontroller is connected to this relay. The heating element temperature is measured by the MAC 6675. The microcontroller disrupts the AC power to the heating element and turns off the relay when the reading goes above the set threshold. The heating element turns on when the temperature drops below the set threshold and the power reconnects. The hot plate surface remains at a steady temperature by continuing this operation. For testing this hot plate, we have to prepare a SMD circuit for reflow. After applying solder paste to each component pad, we arrange each SMD component in its designated spot one by one. Next, we place the circuit on the newly finished SMT reflow hot plate surface. We put up an overhead PCB microscope to watch the solder paste melting process in order to get a close-up look at the solder paste reflow process. The solder paste melts and the components are soldered onto their pad as soon as the hot plate reaches the melting temperature. After operating for a while, the hot plate switches off when it reaches its threshold temperature. A relay then disconnect the power to the heating element and the hot plate turns off again when the temperature falls below the threshold value. This process repeats in a loop. By doing this, you may avoid the overheating and burst of heating element that was the problem with the previous version. The reconnect feature in this new version also helped to eliminate this issue, so you can expect this hot plate to live much longer. The control circuit is based around the Xiao M0 development board, which is linked to an SSD 1306 display by I2C. Furthermore, the MAX 6675 sensor setup and the relay are linked to the Xiao microcontroller. We use a straightforward MOSFET as a switch configuration whose gate is controlled by the Xiao development board to control the relay. MOSFET is the relay driver. Our MAX 6675 IC gather temperature measurement and send them to Xiao development board. The Xiao microcontroller then uses this temperature readings to regulate the MOSFET gate, which turns on and off the relay. The one end of the relay is linked to the live AC on the AC side and the other end is attached to a CON2 screw terminal whose pin number 2 is connected to AC neutral. The relay in this configuration acts as a switch between the heating coil and the AC power source. In order to power the microcontroller and the sensor directly from AC, we utilize an isolated power supply module that converts 240V of AC power into 5V and 3.3V. Additionally, we have added an LED with the IO pin of the Xiao microcontroller. This LED will show if the relay is turned on and off by copying the relay state. After finalizing the PCB and generating its Gerber data, it was sent to Seed Studio for samples. The PCBs were ordered in white solder mask with black silk screen. PCBs were received in a week and their quality was super good considering the rate, which was also pretty low. The Seed Fusion PCB service offer one-stop prototyping for PCB manufacturing and PCB assembly. As a result, they produce superior quality PCBs and fast turnkey PCB assembly within 7 working days. Check out Seed Studio for more details. Using a solder paste dispensing needle, we first add solder paste to each component pad individually to begin the PCB assembly process. In this instant, we are using standard 37 by 63 solder paste. Next, we pick and place all the SMD components in their place on the PCB using an ESD tweezer.
With extreme caution, we lifted the complete circuit board and place it on the SMT hot plate, which increases the PCB temperature to the point at which the solder paste melt and all the components are connected to their pads. Next, we add all the THT components which include the relay, header pin, CON2 screw terminal and isolated power supply to their location and then solder their pads using a soldering iron. This is the finished circuit with all the THT and SMD components mounted on the PCB. Next, we install the SSD1306 display after positioning the Xiao M0 development board into the header pins. Following the circuit completion, we connect the K-type thermistor supplied by the MAX6675 module to the MAX6675 IC CON2 screw connection. In order to test the circuit, we heat the temperature sensor with a lighter and set the threshold to 40 degrees Celsius. The LED turns off when the temperature rises beyond the 40 degrees Celsius and reconnect when the temperature falls below 40 degrees Celsius. The project code along with more details can be downloaded from its page. Link is in the video description. We are going to use the heating element of version 1 hot plate in version 2, but with some major changes. First, the bolt holding the heating element to the wooden base are unscrewed. Next, we unplug the AC supply that was passing through the live and neutral pin of the thermostat and the heating element as well as the thermostat from the heating element completely. To take temperature readings after removing the mechanical thermostat from the heating element, we attach a probe of K-type thermistor to the surface of heating element. The closer the thermistor probe is placed to the heating element, the more accurate the measurement will be. We create a mounting plate out of aluminium sheet that fits in the position of the old existing thermostat. We then attach an aluminium block to the aluminium sheet to hold the thermistor probe in its place. The thermistor probe can easily tighten onto this aluminium block because the thread on this block are the same size, M6. As for the base, we use 340x280mm plywood board. Using a sharpie, we mark the location of the heating element plate's hose on the plywood after positioning it on one side. We follow the same procedure for the circuit and then use a 6mm drill bit to drill holes for mounting the heating element plate. For circuit, we use 2.5mm drill bit. Using a 10mm spade bit, we drill countersink hole in the 6mm hole on the bottom side of wooden board to install the heating element plate. We will be adding 4 M5 bolt from the back side. The bolt head will go into this 10mm drill hole. We use 4 M5 bolt and nut to mount the heating element. To hold the 4 bolt in its place, we first set them in the correct spot and tighten them with an M5 nut on each of them. Next we place a nut on each bolt. The heating element plate was then installed on the 4 M5 bolts. The nut that was placed earlier will keep the platform off the ground. We tighten the heating element plate in its position away from the wooden surface by adding 4 more M5 nuts, which will fully secure the assembly. Next, we use M3 screws to install the circuit on the hardwood base. Four threaded inserts are used as spacers to maintain the circuit above the ground. We model and 3D print two wire holders in order to keep the wire securely fastened to the wooden base. These were made from yellow glass PLA with 0.4mm nozzle and 20% infill. We tighten the wire holder with base using two M3 screws after first securing the heating element AC terminals. The AC main power cord is then secured and the wire holder and the base are fastened together using the same M3 screws. The wiring follows next and it was really simple. We start by connecting the K-type thermistor terminal to the CON2 screw terminal port that was connected on the circuit. The AC heating element terminals are then connected to the CON2 screw terminals and finally the live and neutral AC power cord connection are then made to the CON2 screw terminal of the circuit. Additionally, the hot plate surface is connected to ground port of AC cord, preventing electrocution in event of a short circuit. 
Please note that working with AC is not a joke. Remember, prioritizing safety is crucial when working with AC supply system. Taking precaution help us to create a secure working environment and reduce the risk of accident or injuries. After wiring the hot plate is now completed. The hot plate is operating smoothly. The final touch is the addition of an ESD sheet to the one side of the heating plate which allow the user to place freshly reflowed PCB there while it's cool. The back side of ESD sheet is coated with wood adhesive and the sheet is then attached to the wooden board. The reflow hot plate project is now completed. The project is functioning smoothly overall and we can easily reflow PCB of any size on it. Well, leave a comment if you need any help regarding this project. And this is it for today, folks. Special thanks to Seed Studio for providing support with this project. You guys can check them out if you need any great PCB service or stencil service for less cost and great quality. And I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.